WNDS Sports and Flat State Megabucks present Candlepin Skins. It's bowling with a whole new twist as New England's best bowlers battle for cash prizes in every box. Candlepin Skins is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association. And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hi, everybody, and welcome once again to the London Dairy Bowling Center. Another episode of Candlepin Skins here on the Winds of New England. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. Happy to have you with us. And uh, this moves into our final rotation of skins for the season because we've got the state tournament uh, semifinals and finals coming up in several weeks. But before that, we've got uh, more bowlers the next several weeks looking to get some skins cash and uh, hopefully put a string of wins together. Yeah, that's right. Timmy Lipke had it pretty easy the last couple of weeks. He uh, collected a lot of skins. Uh, but uh, these three other guys here today are <laughs> determined to take some out of his pocket. Well, yeah, Tim Lipke and Mike Sargent are here from last week, having advanced, finishing one and two, and so now they will join two new bowlers, and here are the bowlers that are going to be with us in the weeks to come here on Candlepin Skins. Today, Tim Lipke and Mike Sargent will be joined by our top two qualifiers in the most recent roll-off, Tom Morgan from Revere, Massachusetts, and Bobby Betancourt from Peabody, Mass., making his first appearance here on the Winds of New England. Next week, Jim Flynn and Bob Meyer will stop by. Joe Ashline will be here in a couple of weeks along with Chris Sargent, Mike's son, Steve Daniel and John Janowitz also qualifying in this roll-off as well as Fred Ranella and Paul Willits as we wrap it up uh, this season on Candlepin Skins. And then of course after we finish with these 10 bowlers we will move into the state tournament. We'll be telling you more a little about that uh, as the hour goes by. Of course we always want to refresh your memory on the rules here on Candlepin Skins. Those of you who may be joining us for the first time, it's a little bit different than a normal Candlepin bowling format. Total pinfall is still important. The bowlers roll two boxes instead of our two games, I should say, instead of our normal three. They compete individually, one box at a time. Each box has a dollar value assigned. The high score in each box wins the dollar value or the skin that is assigned to that box. The skins carry over if the two bowlers with the high score in a box tie. And then, of course, the top two bowlers in total pinfall will return next week. Now, here is the uh, dollar amount assigned to each box. $10 apiece for the first three, then $15 for boxes four through six, $25 for seven through nine, and the 10th box in each game worth $50. And of course, the idea for those of you who haven't been with us before, to get the carryovers going, to get the big money going for each box. That's right. That's when it really gets exciting. But again, don't lose track of that total pinfall. Those two bowls will carry over. That's right. And that's how the bowlers get to keep coming back week after week and earn more money for themselves. So we're going to come right back and get this started. First of two games here on Candlepin Skins. Should be a lot of fun. We're looking forward to it. We'll come right back after these messages. <laughs> Mike Sargent. Up on lane 30. First ball of the match. A little off target to the left. And Tim Lipke. These are our two returning bowlers from a week ago, as we mentioned. Mike Sargent finished with a 257 to finish first. Tim Lipke was at 251 to finish second. And for Tim, this is his fifth consecutive week. Boy, thought I had a chance of making that sparing. Picked out just the head pin. Couple of nines in this $10 opening box. First look at Bobby Betancourt on lane 30 also, and we have a pin missing. Two pin. He's going to have to re rack it. The Bobby from Peabody, Massachusetts, making his very first appearance here on the Winds of New England. And he's going to have to wait a little longer <laughs> for those pins to reset. familiar with, uh, with Bobby's game, right? Yes. Yeah, he's come a long ways in a short time. Uh, joined the Pro Tour this year and got his first victory. Good first ball. He'll have a spare leave on the 4-7. We had and the final roll-off at, uh, at Botwell's for the single show. And he oh, was Tom Morgan. Most of the way. Tom Morgan with the big strike. And the skin. Tom, Sorry to interrupt you, Dan. But that's all right. Uh, <laughs> Tom and Bobby Betancourt are Real close friends and 
should be a lot of fun with these two bowlers today on the show. So Tom Morgan gets that first skin with the strike. That's $10 for him, and we move to box number two, which is also worth $10. Timmy still got some work to do for the spare. Oh, yes. Mike Sargent. Tim will take a six. Well, of course, uh, as we mentioned in the open, you saw that Chris Sargent will be here in a couple of weeks and uh, a possible father and son combination if Mike can stay first or second through the next two shows. Tom Morgan a little thin that time. Uh, He's looking ball, for the double strike. Ball looked better than it turned out to be. Another terrific first ball for Bobby Betancourt, and he'll shoot at a single this time. Trying to have the skin. Tom Morgan takes nine on his strike, and Bobby Betancourt does have the skin with Mark, Mike Sargent. So we'll have a carry over here in the second. Tom Morgan takes nine. So the two spares result in a carryover. Again, the fill amounts have no bearing on the skin. It's just what you do in that box. So spare, strike, whatever it happens to be. The fill ball counts only for total pinfall, not relevant for the skin itself. So we move now to the third. Mike Sargent fills his spare with seven. Looking for another, and he's got it. Jumps it across, takes out the seven pin. Shoot buddy. Tim Lipke for his first spare, no. This third box worth $20 now after the carryover. Nine for Tim Lipke. Here's Timmy 24 through three. Here's Mike Sargent's spare. Tim snapped that wood across, just catching the seven pin. Now Bob Betancourt will fill his spare in the second. Looking for the strike to take the lead in the skin, but it's not going to happen. One last chance to win it outright. Strike by Mike Morgan. Tom Morgan, I should I say. Well, it didn't take me long to <laughs> mess those names up. Well, last chance for a carryover now. Tom Morgan will have to somehow knock down the three, seven, and ten. Oh, he just missed. So that gives the skin to Mike Sargent for $20. It's a nine for Bobby Betancourt and a 10 for Tom Morgan. Tom Morgan almost had the three pin. Watch the wood come back and just behind it. Oh, he just missed that three pin. So that's a $20 skin for Mike Sargent. Box number four is now worth 15, and Tim Lipke has the edge with the quick strike, his first mark. Mike Sargent got a decent eight pin drop on the spare, leaves himself just the one in the eight, trying to make it three marks in a row. And, oh, oh give close. it to him. <laughs> wow. And the 10 box for Mike. So he's at 54 through four. Here's Tim Lipke's first ball. A little heavy. Crossed over and tight on the one two pocket, but was able to trip the six pin for the strike. And this skin can only be halved now if we get a strike by Tom Morgan or Bob Betancourt. No. Tom is through the middle. Bob has thrown a good first ball so far. There's another one, but not a strike. So. Give that skin to Tim Lipke, his first of the day. Spare for Bob. Nine box for Tom Morgan. Oh, 
Box number five is worth $15. Mike Sargent will fire first. A little bit short. I yeah, I dropped that ball a little bit. Actually, uh, a little bit behind the foul line. Left the ball out to the right. Timmy Lipke working on a strike. He's going to shoot at the full horseman right. Look out. No, Mike looking for a bailout <laughs> ball now. Tim Lipke trying to convert the four horsemen for the spare, and he's got it. Spare on strike. Mike Sargent gets out with a nine, leaving just the head pin. Tim Lipke's spare. Splits the one and the three. Ball just carries on down through the six and the ten. That would actually kept the ball on the lane. Yeah, actually helped him. Bob Betancourt now filling a spare. With six. Still looking for his first skin of the day. Oh my, just one pin. As Tom Morgan takes out the two pin. Oh, how about this? Almost halved the skin. But instead, it'll go to Tim Lipke for $15. And the two 10 boxes take us to a break. Total pinfall very, very close here after the first five boxes. Tim Lipke with a couple of skins. The last two boxes will continue in a minute. Back we are with the scores very, very close. In fact, after Tim Lipke finishes this spare, we'll know exactly how close. Could be less than 10 pins, separating all the bowlers. Tim will take eight. He's won the last two skins as well. After five boxes, six pins separating our four bowlers. Tim Lipke trying to make it three marks in a row, and he's gonna do just that. Mike Sargent for the spare. Oh, oh my, there it goes. Yes, absolutely. Fine shot. Congratulations from Tim Lipke and two spares up on the board here in the sixth worth $15. See the replay, need some help with that seven pin and here it comes. It'll get there. <laughs> it's gonna take a strike for, for the skin. We already have a carryover with the two spares. To Bob Betancourt. Looks pretty good. Boy, he's going to throw a strike huh. eventually. He's had a very good first ball. I have to have uh, Cindy Sissom go down and check that piece of wood in front of Bobby's shot on lane 29, the 6 and 9. And I'm pretty sure it's out of play. It is. So Bobby will have a clear shot at that spare when it's his turn. But first, Mike Morgan has a much more difficult, rather Tom Morgan has a much more difficult shot. Well, now we're even. Yeah. <laughs> I know, you're gonna blame it on me two, though. Two I started. Two out of three. <laughs> we'll go two out of three. There's the spare for Bobby. No strike, of course, so we already had the carryover. That's a nine for Tom Morgan. He picked a piece of wood out of the channel. So we get a carryover. That makes the seventh box worth $40 now. And Tom was the first one to turn and say that was a nine. He flipped the wooden and channel. Mike Sargent on a spare, and he gets the strike. Tim Lipke now on his spare. Not so fortunate. Just four. Take a lot of work here. Tim trying to bail out. Nine, so advantage Mike Sargent for this skin in the seventh box because of this ball. Again, that was a little oh, heavy on little the one-two pocket. Sure. Five fell into the six, which is maybe unusual. That, maybe that's the ball today. Gotta throw that ball a little heavy. Well, here goes Bobby Betancourt trying to steal it and coming ever closer to that first strike. 
Last chance to steal. It'll go to Mike Sargent. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on. Hang on. Oh, oh, no. oh. Mike, <laughs> Mike Sargent and Tom Morgan get the strikes. It happened so slowly that we were all the way over on Bobby Betancourt's spare, but but we do have the strike on replay. Here is what happened after we looked away. <laughs> this looked for all the world like it was going to be a terrible split. But things just kept happening. And that other piece of wood eventually went over and got the 10 pin. How about that shot? Mike slipped a little bit on the approach that time. Pulled the ball to the left. Leaves himself the 1, the 8, and the 10. And Tim Lipke's looking at the 3-4-6. Three, six, three, six. Mike with a 7 on his strike. Oh, great 10 box. That's what Timmy wanted to do, that second ball. An 8 for Mike Sargent. So an opportunity here for Bobby Betancourt and Tom Morgan. This is a $65 skin here in the 8th box. After that bizarre carryover with the slow motion strike for Tom Morgan. Bidding for another one. Bob Betancourt all over the head pin again. I don't think he's missed it once. A couple of possible spares here. Could have a carryover. Oh, oh no. My. Well now. Double piece of wood there. Just one piece flew left, the other one took off to the right. Somebody needs a 10 box to have the skin. There it is for Tom Morgan. So we've got another carryover here. It's a nine for Bob Betancourt, and for the first time in this match, none of the four bowlers has put up a mark. Here's Tom Morgan's shot. Oh, you see that front piece of wood snap right around the seven? Again, the score is remaining very, very close. We've got another carryover. This ninth box is now worth $90. Tim Lipke, oh, great first ball, almost had the strike. Well, advantage Tim. Mike doesn't get the mark. Timmy's going to be shooting at the seven before the spare. They take the lead in the skin, and this is where it gets interesting. A lot of carryovers, the value increases, and. Oh, Timmy's right on. Trash talking increases. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> It's a nine for Mike Sargent after the spare for Tim Lipke, so the advantage for Tim right now in the skin. Again, this carryover worth $90. It'll take a strike to beat him. I think Bobby's due. Well, there's no oh, question he's going to get a strike one of these times. He'll have a spare leave, although testy wood. Tom Morgan with a tough shot. Bobby Betancourt to have the skin. He's got it. And we will have another carryover. Oh, what a oh, shot by Tom shot. Morgan. Three spares in the ninth. We had already created the carryover, but that was a spectacular one. Look at this. Well, guess what? This 10th box is now worth $140. Tim Lipke to throw first. This is on a spare. Misses the head pin, carries five. Oh. Tim for the oh. spare, no. Mike for the spare. And no. And no. Wow. Of course, the other story, total pinfall. This thing is going to be wide open going into the second game because all these scores are going to be pretty close, it appears. Mike Sargent finishes with a 127 opening game. Tim Lipke with a 120. And we have a pair of 10s there. So the, the carryover is set up. It's going to take some kind of a mark between off the ball of Bob Betancourt or Tom Morgan. And they're both working on spares. And I'm thinking they're both thinking strike. <laughs> Tom Morgan first. Oh, that was a pretty good ball with the one-two pocket. Bob Betancourt. Oh. Oh, wow. Oh, well, Tom has got a tough piece of wood, so. This could win the skin. Yes, oh, yes. he gets it. 
unless Bobby can have it. He cannot. It's $140 for that skin for Tom Morgan. It's the biggest skin we've had in a while. A nine for Bob Betancourt. <coughs> and he finishes up with a 130 he's, opening game. He's going to have, uh, well, not the highest game, but number two, and he hasn't got a skin yet. Could end up with the highest game, depending yep. on what Tom does here. In fact, he will. Just a four fill for Tom Morgan, so that's a 126. So Bob Betancourt does have the lead, but only 10 pins separate first place from fourth place after a very entertaining game one here on Candlepin Skins. It's not on the screen yet, but Tom Morgan did win that skin for $140 in the 10th. We'll be back on Candlepin Skins in a minute. Here's the damage from game one. Tom Morgan with that big skin in the 10th takes the money lead with $150 so far. Tim Lipke and Mike Sargent are both on the board. Bobby Betancourt yet to do so, but uh, how often have we talked about this? Bobby doesn't have a skin, but he's in the lead in total pinfall. It happens quite often. You know, if you ask me, uh, not, not just because he's got the highest score, if you ask me the four bowlers who threw the best ball, I would say Bob Betancourt. He was all over the head pin. I think everybody. All ten boxes he was on it with that first ball. That's a hell of a bid, Michael. Come on, get the ten. Mike Sargent almost with the Worcester conversion for the spare. I was kidding, Bob, because this is his first time with us. And uh, I asked him if he understood how this game worked. <laughs> <laughs> he just laughed. <laughs> Tim Lipke making his fifth consecutive appearance here on Stars and Strikes. Over the last four weeks, he's had two first place finishes and two second place finishes. And he'll shoot at the two, four, and ten. No wood. Gonna have to split them and don't be surprised. These balls make some remarkable spares so far. Not this time. But he can take the lead for the uh, skin. Ten box it is for Tim. Bob Bettencourt. Well, off the head pin for the first time. I'm sorry, Bob. <laughs> not a bad break, though. No, not too bad. One, the two, and the ten. A couple pieces of wood in front of the ten. There it is. Now he just has to survive one more bowler. <laughs> <laughs> the spare on the one, two, and ten. That's it. There you go. It was tough enough to get it, though. <laughs> That's Bob's sixth spare already. Well, Tom Morgan made a shot similar to this, the three, four, and six. He made the three, four, six, ten. Last game. Ooh. Oh, wow. Tom with the leg kick, he thought he had it. So give that $10 skin to Bobby Betancourt, his first. So everybody on the board now, and Tom Morgan takes a 10 box. And again, as we mention every week, the, the score at the bottom is their first game plus every box that's registered here in the second game. So it gives you a total pinfall right up to date. Mike Sarger, box number two, worth $10. Mike reaching on that ball a little bit. A little out of sync, those two balls. It's just a seven. Tim Lipke. On the head pin, but punching through. That time full on the head pin didn't work. No, and I don't like the position of that wood because if you try to split the two and the four, the ball is going to be deflected. Oh, great effort. Great effort. Well, he proved me wrong there. I think he came a lot closer than I thought he was going to come. And the 10. 
Another look at that great shot. The wood had to be deeper than I thought. Ten pin will go over, but nothing touches a six. Bob Bettencourt. Half Worcester this time. That was on a spare also. Oh, almost two in a row. Good effort there. Well, the mark will do it for Tom Morgan in this second box to win the skin. Bob sets up the carryover possibility with the 10, matching Tim Lipke's 10. He didn't feel sorry for you. So it'll either be a carryover or a win for Tom Morgan. Tom already the leading skins money winner of the day, and he sets himself up with a single. And three pieces of wood. This is not automatic. A little trash talking as he gets ready to throw the ball. He's got it. That's a $10 skin for Tom Morgan. <laughs> and a couple of words when he comes back. Tom up to $160 now. Box number three also worth $10. And I think Mike just had that ball slip right out of his hand. He's had a couple. He's perspiring a little bit. He's a little, probably a little nervous. Not used to this. <laughs> For the 10, yes. Four horsemen left for Tim. One, two, four, and seven. No, a little bit too fine on that one. Come on, Timmy, run this thing down. And yeah, it'll be a seven. So Bob Betancourt will step up. Bob from Peabody, Mass, but works as a police officer in the town of Danvers, Mass. Qualified in the roll-off with a 691, which was second overall to Tom Morgan. Who topped the list with a 699. The roll-off for this series held at the Bolarama in Portsmouth. Oh, spare. Great spare shot there for Bob Bettencourt. See the play this wood next to the five and jumps the five into the ten. Tom Morgan now working on a spare. Seven drop on the spare, but a difficult spare in the two, five, and eight. Sleeper in the back, always problems. Oh, he got Not it. For Tom. That carries over the skin. So box number four will be worth $25 now. And Mike Sargent will shoot first. I know it. I gotta make sure that right behind me, too. Oh, Michael, Michael. As I started to say, the final roll off for this series on Candlepin Skins held at the Bolarama in Portsmouth. Our thanks to Nick Genomitis and all the fine folks over there for handling the details for us. Oh, Mike Sargent. The close bid on the spare. You're going to start throwing that second ball first, buddy. You'll be sitting on all hammers. Nine box for Michael. Still looking for his first mark in this second game. Come on, Timmy. Uh, Mike and Tim were markless through the first four boxes for Mike and three for Timmy. And Timmy's not going to have an easy one if he's going to put a mark on the board. A reminder once again of our upcoming schedule here on the Winds in our Saturday time slot. Tim just missing on the spare. Too good, Timmy. Too good. We have four more weeks of skins for you. after today. And then on Saturday, April 29th, as a special presentation for those of you who didn't get a chance to see it on Christmas Day, 
our singles match from that day between Paul Berger and Glenn Shattuck. It is a dandy, and if you didn't watch it on Christmas Day, even if you did, you may want to roll a tape on it and save it. It is a good one. We'll have that one for you here Saturday, April 29th at 12 noon, and then the following Saturday at noon, starting May the 6th, for four weeks, for the first time ever here on the Winds, the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association State Championship. The New Hampshire State Championships will have the women's semifinals and finals, and then the men's semifinals and finals. Four consecutive weeks. We're really looking forward to that. Well, the carryover is set up with a pair of tens. Tom Morgan needs some kind of a mark, spare or strike. Well, we'll have to make a shot. Just a five fill on his spare. Tens are good, Tim. <laughs> Tim let me say, tens are good. <laughs> And will it get there? No, we'll have a carryover. Not enough already. <laughs> <laughs> we got some talkers in this group. Yes, we do. You notice that? Yes. We have. I mean, occasionally we might get two or sometimes three. We got four this time, I think. Oh, I haven't heard Bob say too much, but but the other three, they'll talk. Carryover. Come on, guys. This fifth box now worth forty dollars. Keep winning until you be able to retire. Total pinfall scores: uh, Bob Bettencourt and Tom Morgan are tied at one seventy-eight, followed closely by Mike Sargent at one sixty-two, and Tim Lukey not that far behind either at one fifty-seven. So, anybody's game here. Come on, let's go, Timmy. Let's go. Come on, Tim. Come on, Tim. Let's go. 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 let us go 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 let
Oh, does he have it? Does he have it? No. <laughs> Look at the sympathy you got here. Let me get into it. Poor guy's crying down there. I was hoping to. I was hoping you got wood. <laughs> Meanwhile, a piece of wood being removed, Tim will have a shot of the Sparrier on the single. By the way, that. Uh, 10 box, the $40 10 box that Tom Morgan came up with right before the break also gave him a one pin lead overall in the match over Bobby Betancourt. But the score is still very close here, and Tim Lipke is running fourth. So that mark, very critical for him. It'll stay, take a strike to have the skin here, the skin worth $15 here in the sixth. Bobby Betancourt, he's still got a strike coming, I would think, somewhere. Not this time. One more chance to have the skin by Tom Morgan. Otherwise, Mike Sargent will have it. Right now, sitting with that total pinfall. Very close. Good spare for Bob. Okay, Jay, we need a real bowler now. <laughs> well, last time he needed a 10 to win the money. This time he needs a strike just to have the skin. Got a chance. Same eight pin. That wouldn't go over for Tim Lipke. It's going to be that pin. Same eight pin. And we're going to have to have another piece of wood checked, it appears. I don't think it's going to affect the shot at all, but Tom would like to have it out of the way. Well, I don't know. If it's out of there, he might be able to play that wood to the right. <laughs> Cindy turned around and said something to Tom. I don't know what, but... That piece of wood was out of play. So now he's got two choices of wood to the right, because if you shoot at the pin, there's a chance you cap that piece of wood and he flies by the eight pin. Let's see what he decides to do. Oh, no, he's got it with the other piece of wood. So three spares after Mike Sargent's strike. Mike wins the skin with that strike. Marks right across the board. Strike and three spares. Mike on the strike now, and again. I make it work, son. Come on, Mike, you can make this thing go. Come on, we get this Problems here. with the first ball. The seventh box worth $25. Oh, my. The four fill on the strike. That does not going to help Mike for the total pinfall. And just the five box. The other three bowlers all working on spares. Very important ball for Tim Lipke as he trails Bob Betancourt and Tom Morgan. He can pull his to the left, but decent drop of seven. One, three, and six left. Oh, yes. Very precise with that shot. Keeps his hopes alive. Thank God for a second ball. First one's not there. Bob Betancourt on his spare. On the head pin again. Seven. Wants, wants that ten pin to go down, but it's not going to happen. Four, seven, ten, and three pieces of wood in front of the ten, which he'll probably try to use. Can he spray it? Oh, he missed it. He knew it. He went too far. Wait well, minute. wait a second here. Nope. Not enough power. Just a shade too far to the right. So it'll go as a 10 for Bob. Gives him a 21 pin advantage over Tim Lipke, but Timmy's working on a spare, so that'll be reduced somewhat. Tom Morgan working on a spare. Chance to put some distance between himself and Tim and Bob. Tim leads in this skin with a spare also. Tom will have, well, I guess you'd call this a spare lead, but it's not an easy not shot. Not an easy one, no. Three, five, six, and ten. For the half. Oh, yes. he's right on it. Wow. <laughs> Turns around and points at Tim Lipkin saying, I took it out of your pocket. <laughs> oh, Michael, we better get a one for that bomb. Come on. So that makes the eighth box worth $50, and of course the uh, total pinfall situation getting more and more interesting here. Mike Sargent has really been struggling with the first ball all day. Yeah. 
almost recovers with a spare. That'll be a 10. But Mike is in trouble in uh, terms of total pinfall. Yeah, absolutely. And look, he's still got his hopes alive. We're working on a spare in the seventh. Oh, big kick out there on the four pin. Gives him the nine drop. And a shot at the single. And of course, they're all big right now for Tim Lipke. And he's got it right on it. Three spares in a row for Tim Lipke. As after a five box drought, as you can see, Tim went the first five boxes of this game without a mark. He's put up three in a row. <laughs> Put up a late charge here to keep his streak alive. Of appearances, and there's a kick out for Bob Betancourt, and he'll shoot at the seven. Kicked out the 6-10, leaves himself just the seven. As Timmy Lipke is climbing within a dozen pins of Bob Betancourt, and Timmy already has a mark posted in the uh, in I'm the eight. All day, yeah. well, thought that wood was going to roll off. Now it's in a pretty good spot as a guide for Bob. Oh, but he hit it away. It was okay to kind of catch the cap. He could have deflected over for the seven pin, but he got too much of it. So it's a nine box. But what that will do is give Tom Morgan a chance to increase his lead here, and it will also give Tim Lipke an even better chance to overtake Bob Betancourt. Two boxes to go. Well, Tom took the last skin away from Tim Lipke, and he just turned around and gave him the old glare, like, <laughs> I may throw a strike here and take this away again. This is a $50 skin, by the way, here in the eighth. Oh, boy. <laughs> Things are looking good for Tim. <laughs> Not this time, so give that skin $50 worth to Tim Lipke. Thanks, guys. <laughs> And it's a seven box. So that makes it interesting. <laughs> you look at the total pinfall. Tim Lipke, don't forget, is 212, but he's working on a spare. Not far behind Bob Bettencourt and Tom Morgan. I'll tell you, Mike Sargent is not out of this either, if he could put up a mark here. I don't think it's going to be easy, though, because I don't think that wood's going to be in play. Cindy Sisson's getting a heck of a workout today down there four or five times already. Mike, of course, wants this piece of wood yeah. to be in play. Oh, but and it is. Wow. It's well, very close, I'm sure, but... Uh, left edge, maybe? Um, or which way would you go on this? Yeah, I, th I think I tried left. I was certainly wouldn't try in the red line. Yeah. Let's get it out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a nine for Mike, and that actually would have been an opportunity for him to climb back in had he marked, but it's going to be tough now. And of course, now we shift our shift gears to Tim Lipke, and uh, of course, very important ball here. Misses the head pin, just gets just six. He's looking for his fourth mark in a row, but this is not going to be easy. The one, two, nine, and ten. That puts him five pins behind Bob Betancourt and eight behind Tom Morgan. He's definitely going to need a mark in the 10th, barring no marks by Bob Bedcourt and Tom Morgan. Nine box. 107 through nine, and you see his two game total down at the bottom, 227. So he figures to be in third here after Bob and Tom finish up. Of course, what he's hoping is that there'll be no marks here. Well, Bob Bedcourt's going to have a shot. At the three and six. He just wants to drive the ball straight through the three pin into the six. This would be a huge mark for him. Oh, got it. Got too far left, but enough to carry it. That puts Bob in the driver's seat for this skin also. Bob has just one skin today for $10. And I'm sure right now he's just concerned about keeping in first or second place. Well. Tom Morgan needs this to have the skin. No. So give that $25 skin to Bob Betancourt. Yeah. 
and an eight box for Tom Morgan. So advantage Bobby Betancourt right now. As you see, Bob is one pin behind, but that doesn't count the fill that he has upcoming on his spare in the ninth. So we move to the tenth. It's a $50 box, and Mike Sargent is on the head pin, but has to shoot at the diamond. Mike needed strikes in order to have a chance. Now we're just thinking of maybe putting a spare up, maybe grabbing that last $50 skin. That's what's uh, kind of interesting with the skins. You still have some money to shoot for, even though you may be out of the total pinfall race. Well, after uh, finishing first a week ago, Mike Sargent will not be coming back next week. As he finishes with a 2.17. So the other three bowlers will battle for the two qualifying spots. Tim Lipke first. Needs a mark. Wow. Don't be shot, Timmy. Tim. Tim will definitely need a mark in order to advance. Right. This is, uh, is crucial. Somehow he's got to find a way of taking out the four, six, seven. He's telling everyone else how he's going to play it. <laughs> <laughs> but he's not sure. <laughs> I, I think I might go far right. I don't know. Oh. Nope. Oh, he tried to catch the wood in the four pin. So barring a miracle, it's going to be Bob Betcourt and Tom Morgan. Nines are up there here in the tenth. Bob working on a spare. He would be four on the spare and he would be coming back. But we've still got a $50 skin to settle here in the 10th box. A pair of nines up. Oh, boy. Wow. Well, that ball brings Bob Betancourt back next week. But not right now, he's trying to find a way to make a spare or at least a 10 box. Well, he keeps himself alive for the 10. And he's got it. 10 for 119. So 249 for Bob Betancourt. You see Tim Lipke's two game total of 236. That will not be good enough. So the only question now is will Bob Betancourt finish first or second? If Tom Morgan gets a mark, he'll finish first, probably. And he'll also win this skin. He had a tough time keeping a smile off his face when he glanced up here. There's no mark up. He's got confidence enough. He thinks he's going to put one up there, oh, but he doesn't. He didn't. Well, now, now he's he going to make this <laughs> to keep it away from Bob Betancourt. So everybody except Bob rooting for Tom right now. <laughs> and he just threw his towel at him. <laughs> for the have? Yes, sir. That means we will have a carryover $50 skin, and we'll settle that when we come back here on Candlepin Skins. Already settled. Tom Morgan and Bob Betancourt will be back next week. We'll come back to settle that last skin in a minute. All right, here we go. A fifty-dollar skin to settle. This can be fun. Uh, yeah, the whole yeah. issue is settled, and a little extra money on the line here. We'll see who can grab it. Tim Lipke almost with a strike. Come on, Mike. Oh! oh. Good luck, Michael. Oh, he struggled. Yeah. Struggled most of the day. I would like to have seen him put a mark up there, but. Remember, if there is a carryover here in the overtime box, only the guys that carry over will continue. And Mike is out of it with a nine. Tim Lipke puts up a 10. Now Bob Betancourt and Tom Morgan. I saw a spare on the scoreboard, but it is a 10 for Tim Lipke. No, that was a oh, spare. Oh, I, I take it back. That was a spare. Right. Two balls done. On the single, right. Two balls a spare. <laughs> Three balls. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's see. Bob Betancourt's got the 7-10 and all kinds of wood out in front. I think he'd probably have to play the one farthest to the right, but that's what he's trying it. Oh, oh no. my. Well, that means unless Tom Morgan can make this, the $50 will go to Tim Lipke. Oh, oh. Two great <laughs> shots. 
Well, that settles it. The $50 skin will go to Tim Lipke, and we'll be back to wrap it up on Candlepin Skins in a minute. All right, we are back here on Candlepin Skins, and quickly, here's how it happened here on the program today. Bobby Betancourt, first appearance ever, finishes on top of the leaderboard with 249. Tom Morgan will be back next week also with the 244. Not so fortunate, Tim Lipke and Mike Sargent. Now the winnings for the day. Tim, with that last $50 skin, takes second place with $130. But uh, Tom Morgan, the big money winner of the day, $200. So a couple of big winners, Tom Morgan with the money and Bob Betancourt kept plugging away, first appearance on the show, and he'll be back next week. Yeah, let's hope he does a little better in the skins. Once he got the format down, I think he's going to do much better. <laughs> we'll be back, of course, next Saturday here on Candlepin Skins. Don't forget, tomorrow at noon, Park Place Lanes, Wyndham, New Hampshire, Candlepin Stars and Strikes. We hope you'll be there for that as well. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole crew, I'm Doug Brown. Have a great weekend, everybody.